In this video, we'll use geometric algebra to show how we go from Newton's law of gravity, f equals minus gmm over r squared, to an orbital motion, such as the elliptical orbital motion of the Earth traveling around the Sun. We'll assume that the system we're trying to solve is like the Earth and Sun system, with the solar mass being much, much bigger than the Earth mass, so that we can effectively ignore subtleties like whether or not we have to work with the center of mass coordinate systems and reduced mass. In our last video, without mentioning the application, we did most of the work required by computing r hat prime equals 1 over r times the rejection of r hat from the velocity. We can rewrite this, writing p equals mv for the momentum, x equals r r hat as before, and an angular momentum bivector, l equals x wedge p. This gives us r hat prime equals 1 over m times r hat over r squared times l. Now we'll write Newton's gravitational law as m dv dt equals minus gmm times r hat over r squared. We can solve this for r hat over r squared and substitute in, finding r hat prime equals minus 1 over gmm times dv dt times l. We can now write dv dt times l as d dt of vl minus dl dt. Angular momentum is conserved for the system, which means that dl dt is zero. Justifying that properly is beyond the scope of this video. We're left with dr hat dt equals minus 1 over gmm times d dt of vl. This is a perfect derivative equation, allowing us to integrate immediately, finding r hat equals minus 1 over gmm times vl minus a vector constant e. We'll use a negative vector constant here for convenience, knowing what's to come. Before we try to find the orbits associated with our apparent solution, we need to understand a subtlety. We have vector terms, r hat and e, yet we have a multivector term, v times l, where l is a bivector. In general, the product of a vector and a bivector has both vector and trivector components. We'll start by rewriting vl as mvl, so that it becomes momentum times the angular momentum. This is a product that we can then expand. The product of a vector and bivector is the dot product of the vector and that bivector, and the wedge product of that vector and the bivector. However, p wedged with p is zero, the dry vector term is killed. We're left with just the dot product of p with x wedge p. That's a vector. We can expand this explicitly if desired, yielding p dot x times p minus p dot p times x. We're now ready to put our solution into a standard conic equation form. We're going to rewrite our velocity as p over m, and then take dot products with our position vector x equals r times r hat. On the left, we have x dotted with r hat, which is r, and on the right, we have x dotted with e, and we have x dotted with the pl vector. We'll write that x dotted with pl as the grade zero selection, say a dot b is the grade zero selection of the product of a, b. This allows us to associate the xp product, writing out xp equals x dot p plus x wedge p. x wedge p is the angular momentum, x dotted with p all times l is a scalar times a bivector, which is a bivector. A bivector has no grade zero selection, so that product is killed. We're left with the grade zero term of x wedge p, which is the angular momentum, times the angular momentum. Angular momentum squared is a scalar, a negative scalar in this case. Grouping our r terms, we almost have the standard conic form. r all times 1 plus e cos theta equals a scalar. That scalar we'll write as e times d, where d is the directrix and e is the eccentricity. We used a negative vector e earlier so that we have e greater than zero in this final result. e between zero and one is an ellipse. E equals one is a parabola, and e greater than one is a hyperbola. To summarize, we found that r hat prime could be written as one over m times r hat over r squared all times l, the angular momentum. We wrote Newton's gravitational law as dv dt equals minus gm r hat over r squared, substituted that into our r hat prime equation. We then made use of the conserved angular momentum to find a perfect differential equation of first order, we integrated that, and put that into a standard conic form. This video was made with Manum, Mathematica, and DaVinci Resolve. Please like, subscribe, and share for more content of this nature. For more geometric algebra content, check out my blog, peterneo.com, where you'll also find my book, Geometric Algebra for Electrical Engineers, and plenty of other math and physics related content, including latex typeset notes for a number of undergrad and graduate physics and engineering classes.